Thank you viewers for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. This is a platform which was specifically created for our farming community here in Zimbabwe. This is where we converge and discuss issues surrounding production and productivity in our agricultural enterprises. Now today we are here at Moncris Farm here in Selu, where we are going to be looking at the various ventures cropping enterprises here. We are going to be looking at soya bean production, green millet production, to mention but a few as we encourage our farming community to participate in agricultural ventures as we pave way towards achieving Vision 2030 as a country. Now if you look at sustainable development goal number 12, it speaks of sustainable production and uh, responsible consumption, where we are saying that we need to be to uh, incorporate sustainable measures when it comes to producing our crops here in Zimbabwe because we are looking at issues surrounding climate change, we are looking at issues surrounding our economy such as food security, import substitution, export growth. This all can be addressed if we take our agricultural industry seriously and listen to the advice that comes from our technical advisors every now and again. In this particular episode, I have taken the liberty of inviting my friend uh, Wendy Machashu Mazura. She is the chief agronomist at CITCO right here in Zimbabwe. Wendy, thank you so much for gracing our platform with your presence today. Thank you so much, Wadza. It's always a pleasure. Like I have said earlier on, today we are going to be focusing on soya bean production together with green millet production. I understand that in our economy, if you look, we have issues surrounding import substitution, export growth, unemployment of the youth. How do you see it as an agronomist? How is soya bean production going to address these issues? In short, I'm saying the importance of soya bean production for our Zimbabwean economy. Thank you so much, Wadza, for that point. I'm happy that we are discussing this point when we are seeing a green endless belt of soya bean established in this season yes this is a crop from the 2021 farming season which is to say timeliness is of the essence yes. so when you establish a crop here in Zimbabwe you're talking about crop diversity so crop diversity speaks to issues to do with growing multiple crops rather than just sticking to the staple crop which is maize if you look at this crop that we are seeing here Wadza soya bean it has in an important value uh, contribution that it has to the industry whereby that whereby you find that uh, soya bean can contribute 20 percent in terms of the um, the oil content that is required and it also has a percentage of 40 percent so it also has a percentage as well, uh, a rich percentage that you find of other ions and other elements that are in it, which is to say it's nutritious. Then outside of that, there are many uses, multiple uses of soya bean, where you find that you can also find it in, um, uh, in, in some of our foodstuffs, where you can make chunks, you can make yes. soy milk, which is quite, quite nutritious and tasty. You can also find that uh, soya bean is also in, um, in, in some flour. We have some soya bean flour, which is also more nutritious and healthy than the other alternatives that might be available on the market. Then outside of it being a food crop, soya bean can also work as a livestock feed, where it can be used to make soya cake, it can be used to make stock feeds, a wide range of stock feeds for a wide range of animals. So it's something that is really important to incorporate in our cropping programs. Then moving outside of that, as we move hand in glove, Wadza, with the Sustainable Agriculture Initiative goals, which seek to align our agricultural activities with modern technologies that are also going to improve our soil structure as we build towards the benefit of future generations and the reduction of our contribution to climate change. Yes. We are seeing that uh, growing soya bean, it's also important because soya bean is rich in terms of the nitrogen fixation ability that it has. So if it's going to be incorporated within the soil after we harvest, we incorporate our stover, we incorporate our roots, then we are going to enrich our soil and get a much higher yield just by managing to integrate some multiple cropping uh, programs where we are saying we are building the organic matter. Yes, we are introducing inorganic fertilizer, but we are integrating in a way that we are also being conscious of what we are doing to the environment. Then outside of that, in terms of the markets, soya bean can be sold at a wide range of markets. Yes. Where you find that there are some processors, some processing companies that do some so, some some cooking oil, some foodstuffs, a wide range of foodstuffs. Wadza, did you know that in Zimbabwe, our requirement for soya bean ranges between 220,000 metric tons. But we are producing, if we talk of the previous years, we are producing around 75 oh, to 80,000 metric tons, okay. which is to say there's a very huge gap in terms of our production, our annual production and our annual requirement. So the balance needs to be then uh, imported. So we need to locally produce our soya bean so that we meet our annual requirement. And the industry has the capacity to take on board over 400,000 metric tons of soya bean. And nowadays there's talk of uh, an increase in the uptake by our industry to above 500,000 metric tons. 
of soya bean, which is to say the market is there. So it's a crop that we put in the bracket of cash crops because the, the market is readily available. So our farmers should really consider growing soya bean. Thank you so much, Wendy. You would find that as we progress, as we move towards achieving Vision 2030 as a country, we are talking of becoming an upper middle class economy. You would find that there is a time that is coming whereby we will be moving away from food security to food luxury. At the moment, we are saying that every household should have enough to consume. Eventually, people would want luxurious foodstuffs. We are talking of the soya milk. At the moment, you'd find that a few households are consuming it. I want you to talk about the important factors that a farmer needs to take cognizance of if he's going to be successful or if she's going to be successful in a soya bean cropping venture. You would find that in every cropping venture, even in tobacco, they are giving advice, especially if we look at issues surrounding the dry spell we are experiencing as a country. Mm -hmm. They are being given advice every now and then. The important factors you would want to tell our viewers there at home. In soya bean production, our farmers need to understand the dynamics that come with oil seed crops like soya bean, even from the choice of seed, where you find that it also needs to marry with the nature of the season that we have. So it also speaks to the agroecological uh, zones that a farmer is going to be establishing their crop, particularly if it's going to be 100% rain fed. Okay. Yes, this crop we are seeing here was established under irrigation. So those farmers with irrigation have an advantage whereby they can come in a bit earlier in October, in November, early November, and establish their crop, then maximize of the heat units. But for dry land, Wadza, I hasten to say that our farmers should establish when they've received effective rains. Okay. What do we mean by that? Yes. We mean that our farmers should only plant when there is enough moisture to germinate and emerge their soya bean crop. Because by virtue of it being an oil seed crop, it's different from maize. You cannot then dry plant it. Because if you dry plant it with the extremely high heat units that we are receiving right now, it will then affect that oil content and that germination percentage is going to be low. So farmers should not dry plant soya bean. We say no to soya bean dry planting. Okay. And we only should plant when we have received ample amounts of rainfall. Variety selection also plays a pivotal our role. When now there is talk of farming more as a business, Waza. So our farmers need to consider the yield potential that they are getting, the disease tolerance whereby you don't want to come in and incur added costs by spraying unnecessarily when there are some varieties that can withstand some of the diseases that might be available yeah. uh, at that time. Then also our farmers need to be guided by when we are talking about soya bean, we talk about pod clearance okay. here. I'll just reduce the population a bit by uprooting one. Okay. So we are talking about issues to do with port clearance. Okay. So when you talk of port clearance, we are we mean the area from the ground level there to the area where we start seeing our very first effective leaves. Oh, okay. So here we say at uh, you need to select varieties that have a port clearance of more than 15 centimeters, which is to say if you are going to combine harvest, you will not leave any seed in the in the in the field okay. you're going to harvest everything imagine if there were seeds down there and the harvester starts harvesting from the top there you it means half your yield half your yield will be left and we are talking of farming as a business and every single uh, seed counts so you need to make sure that the pod clearance is on point the other important thing that you need to note is the days to maturity maybe you're doing multiple cropping or double cropping you want to come in with wheat so you need to select varieties that are going to mature within the time in question okay. so that you are not found wanting thank you so much when it is always a pleasure having you with us on agribusiness where you're always parting uh, giving out knowledge to our farming community there you heard it viewers on that note we are gonna go on a short commercial break we'll be right back with this and more in the second segment stay tuned <laughs> Zimbabwe for staying tuned to agricultural new directions agribusiness we are in the second segment of your program as you can see there are already uh, farm workers here who are doing the spraying the routine spraying using their boom sprayer and their tractor now viewers we encourage you to be a part of these conversations feel free to get in touch with me the producer was on 0772 807 506 alternatively you can like our Facebook page agribusiness with Wazanai. you can make a follow-up on this episode and more 
on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are also now available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness110. Now, earlier on, before we went to the break, I was joined by Wendy Matashu Mazura. And she was taking us through the nitty gritties of uh, the importance of soybean production here in Zimbabwe and addressing certain issues in our economy, such as import substitution, export growth, food security, unemployment of the youth, to mention but a few, as we pave way towards achieving Vision 2030 as a country. At this point in time, I am going to be joined by the farm manager here at Moncris Farm, who is going to be taking us through uh, their stages and how they established this beautiful uh, crop. As you can see, it is a sea, an endless sea of the soybean crop. This is Mr. Arnold Mashanda, the uh, manager here at Moncris Farm here in Salu. Uh, Mr. Mashanda, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Wazanai. Yes, as we get into our discussion, Mr. Mashanda, a brief background or a brief introduction of the farming, uh, the, your cropping enterprises here at Moncris Farm. Here at Moncris Farm, basically we are measuring in potato production, uh, soybeans, wheat and maize farming. So basically, that's, those are the crops that we do here on the farm. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, as you can see, we are here with uh, your soybean crop. I understand that they are. it is at various stages. This one is at this stage and you have just finished planting. It is still emerging. How did you establish it, this crop? And uh, the importance of timeliness in our soybean production on any cropping venture in Zimbabwe? Basically, uh, on this crop here, the one we were standing at, we had potatoes that... Uh, we had just lifted here. Okay. So basically, on this on this on this land that we are, we did not do any 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 tillage after we, after lifting our potatoes, we then basically came in with our planting. Okay. But uh, before planting, we we had to dress our seed with uh, thyram and uh, called nitro liquid at uh, 300 mils uh, per, per, per per hectare. That's basically 300, 150 mils per 50 kgs of seed. Then we had a pre-irrigation before planting, which we then came in and planted our soil, which is very vital to plant your soils inside uh, moist, moist soil conditions. So we then came up uh, and uh, our in, uh, row spacing was 90 centimeters and uh, in row 2.8, giving us a plant population of 471,000 plants per hectare. Okay. So basically after that, we then came up with our pre-emergent herbicides which in this case we used uh, Frontier Optima and uh, Metribuzin. Okay, I want us to talk about rhizobium. In our farming community, especially those who are either sugar beans or soya bean production, they are interested and they want to know the uses or how it is applied, uh, rhizobium. Can you maybe take us through that? Yes, basically, as I earlier on mentioned, you bring in your rhizobium in a cooler box okay. and it should be stored where temperatures are low. Because once, it, once you have high temperatures, you, the, 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 the rhizobium will not work. You okay. basically killed uh, what's inside the rhizobium. So we then put in your rhizobium in an epsec, uh, add on some water, then you spray with a clean epsec on your seed. Okay. And you have a shovel actually mixing properly your, 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 your rhizobium, uh, mixing the, 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 the soya seed and the, the rhizobium. The rhizobium. Okay. Once you've done that, you cover your, your, your seed to prevent direct sunlight from getting onto your, your treated seed. Then you put into your planter, and basically your planters also have covers on the seed, yeah. the seed boxes there. Then in with your rhizobium. Try as much as possible not to have seed that's dressed with the rhizobium sleeping overnight. And then you oh. then say, I'll plant it again tomorrow. You try and dress, put up your, your rhizobium on seed that you intend to plant that same day. Thank you so much, Mr. Mashad. I understand that our viewers there at home, especially our soya bean farmers, even the sugar bean farmers, were taking notes, especially when it comes to rhizobium application and its uses. It was a pleasure having you with us in this segment. We will see you when we talk about green millet's production in the segment to come after this one. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions. Today we are discussing soya bean production, and previously I was joined by Mr. Arnold Mashanda. He is the farm manager here at Moncris Farm. At this point in time, I have taken the liberty of inviting Mr. Godwill Macherera. He is the agronomist in Mashonal and West Province. Uh, Mr. Macherera, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Wadza. How are you? Yes. Uh, questions directed to you are as follows. Firstly, I would like to know about, uh, is it possible, or the implications or the advantages that come with a a farmer using soya bean seed which he would have harvested uh, in seasons prior to this one or in the previous seasons. What are the 
implications of uh, such practices? Uh, normally, Waza, our storage facilities are different. So the standard we use as a seed house are normally different to what our farmers use when storing grain. The soybean seed can easily uh, be unviable due to storage facilities, due to high temperatures, uh, presence of moisture, and also when harvesting. Some farmers harvest the seeds when they are not well mature, prematurely. That seed will not be good stuff for seed for planting. So what I would advise for our farmers is to use certified seed from our seed houses. Uh, for instance, when we buying seed, we buy seed for different purposes, different agroecological zones, especially for the growing period. When doing a crop rotation, usually when we are using wheat, we are encouraging farmers to use those varieties that will not take much time into the food so that they will allow the coming in of wheat. Yeah. So we can use varieties like SC status, which is a determinate variety. When I'm saying determinate is that when it starts flowering, the vegetative growth will stop. Then when we are not doing our rotations as such, we will be able to choose varieties like SC Serenade, SC Spike. Those varieties will, will be, when they reach flowering, they will continue growing vegetatively. Okay. So that will be the different. We will discourage farmers to use retained seed. Some of it will be damaged by insects. Okay, thank yes. you so much. That was very detailed. Moving right along, Mr. Macherera, I want us to talk about, you understand that if you look at uh, soybean production here in Zimbabwe at the moment, some have already established their crop, like in this instance, and yes. some are still looking to plant. There are insects and pests that can be a nuisance in soybean production. What are those and what is their control? What do you use to control them or manage them? Okay, okay. We encourage farmers to maintain our recommended plant population so that they will achieve our yield targets. Okay. So if we do not manage pests efficiently, our yields will be low. When planted, the, our crop is prone to cutworm uh, insects, whereby they will come into the field and uh, cutting down the seedlings. So we encourage farmers to do their scouting and use appropriate uh, pesticides not just to get anything that kills and get into the field. Recommended appropriate uh, pesticides. When the crop is just uh, grown, there is a danger of semi-lupers. Those also need to be well scouted and be managed so that the, our yield will remain at the targeted uh, scale. Thank you so much, Mr. Macheri. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thanks, Siwaza. On that note, viewers, we're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment where we are going to be looking at Green Millie's production. Stay tuned. Zimbabwe for staying tuned to agricultural new directions agribusiness earlier on we were discussing soybean production its importance in our economy and even the nitty-gritties that come with establishing it at this point in time we are in the third and final segment and we are going to be talking of the summer maize crop production and to discuss this and more I am joined by mr. Arnold Mashanda can you maybe give us a brief background of how you established it given that it is an irrigated crop uh, can you maybe take us through that uh, thank you what's the night basically he was standing in a maize field. We did zero tillage on this on this land. Uh, the advantages of zero till is you have less uh, compaction on the soil on the on the land. Uh, good water moisture conservation that takes place when you have zero till. Uh, less erosion as well, and you have a, a very good soil structure. You won't have disturbed uh, your soil, so you have very good soil structure on your on your, on your land. We planted it on the 1st of uh, November and uh, we, had, uh, uh, we planted it with a plant population of uh, 60,000 plants per, per hectare. hectare. Yeah, that was what we planted. We, with the losses, we might end up being about 50, 57,000 plants per, per, per hectare. Okay. With your 90 centimeters, 
uh, row spacing and uh, 23 centimeters in row. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mashanda, maize uh, is something that our Zimbabwean farmers, most of them do, if uh, not all of them, everyone is into maize production, be it for consumption and some even do it on commercial basis like you are doing here. Your word of advice in terms of the key fundamentals that a farmer needs to take cognizance of if he's going to be successful, if he's looking to, be, uh, pro to make profits, making it a lucrative venture given that there are calls from our government to ensure that agriculture is taken as a formidable business. Your word of advice in a snippet. I'll say for, for maize, for those with irrigation, it is actually prudent to come in early. Okay. Uh, because you want to maximize on your heat units. Um, and also when you come in early, you have less of uh, this green vegetation. And there's so much pressure from your the fall armyworm. Okay. So it is very important to continuously scout and actually spray your sprays with anything that is emamectin benzoate in it uh, uh, frequently to take, take control of this fall, fall armyworm. Also your, your fertilizer regime, you need to take your soils for, for soil testing, correct, have a correct pH, then uh, also apply fertilizers, your basals as per the recommendations from your soil so simple results. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Mashan. It was a pleasure having you with us on this program. Your final words as we round off, moving on to our technical support. I would say to the farmers, yeah, this season has been, uh, it's been a late season. I think the rains, uh, we're all waiting for the rains, but I think they are coming. Let's not lose hope. Yes. When the rains come, please, let's, let's plant and then and, and just pray for, for a good season. It might be late, but it could end up being a good season. Okay, yes. thank you so much. There you heard it, viewers. It might be late, but it might end up being a good season. Stay tuned for more. Wendy, earlier on I was with uh, Mr. Mashanda. He was taking us through how they uh, established this crop. He is saying that they did zero tillage, which speaks to conservation agriculture. As we round off our episode, Wendy, your brief explanation or in a nutshell, what would you want our farmers to remember, to take home as we are awaiting the rain? As we are awaiting the rains and we are seeing that in some places they have already started, yes. I would like our farmers to take note of the fact that in, in crop production, there are a lot of factors that result in crop failure. But for you to succeed, you really need to pay attention to your selection of your crop and variety, particularly also paying attention to the good agronomic practices that you need to employ to unlock the genetic potential of the varieties that you will have established. So looking at maize, we see that uh, those irrigated uh, farmers, with, uh, those farmers with irrigation yes. have managed to establish their crop and it's now at an advanced stage. But you need to continuously scout so that you are on top of the situation. You don't want, for, you don't want a situation whereby an insect, pest, um, uh, an insect pest problem starts in your field and reaches the economic threshold or injury level when you have not noticed it because it's going to reduce the crop stand and the plant population will be affected. Ultimately, the yield will be affected. Okay. So regular scouting is one of the key elements for every farmer. You don't just scout once at the field by just driving through at the edges of the field over the weekend. Farmers need to get down, get into the field and do a systematic way of scouting so that they can really get a true picture and reflection of what's happening in the field. Yes, thank you so much, Wendy. In maize production, you would find that there is issues surrounding the four army when being a nuisance. Your sentiments and your word of advice to our farming community. Indeed, uh, four army when over the past uh, couple of years we have seen that it has been a huge nuisance yes. in our crop production, particularly in maize. So the trick for farmers is to come in early with scouting. If you scout early, you are able to come in with the remedial measures early enough so that you don't see the pest growing to the third, fourth insta without you spraying. It's easier to control at the first insta when you have that little green worm with a black head. It's yes. easier to control with a wide range of uh, insect, uh, insecticides. But once you have reached the fourth insta where you can count the dots on the back <laughs> and you can see the why on the neck it means that you are running a bit late and you can see the little little uh, little feet that are there on that uh, on, on that, that worm on that worm so yeah. it becomes a challenge for you to control so timely application of products then you also need to alternate because for armworm develops resistance very fast to uh, insecticides so you also need to alternate insecticides with different active ingredients there our farmers are implored on to read below the triangle that's where we find the active ingredient name because oh, in some okay. cases you are buying uh, products that have different 
different trade names, but you are buying the same products and ultimately you are applying four different products when in essence you are applying the same One product. Chemical. So it's yes. important for you to seek technical advice as well as um, uh, to discuss with agrochemical specialists to get more information on the options that are there for the control of armyworm. And on weed management, the weed spectrum, the time of application, if it's raining, our farmers should not come in and try to, to, to spray just before it rains because that product will be washed off because we, we talk about the rain fastness of products yes. whereby they need to have about three to six hours for them to be absorbed. So if farmers don't observe that, they will incur losses and increase their cost structure by buying more chemicals where they could have saved. Yes. On that note, viewers, we're going to stop here and we're going to end here. From me, Wazanai Manyore, I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manyore. And Mukoma Dani, Daniel Murangano. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you for watching.